Good morning. So, as I said, we're going to open on our backs. So if you're not already there, you can go in there with me. Putting the feet comfortably apart a little bit wider than your hips. And that will facilitate and allow for the knees to fall inwards and then adjust your feet as there so that you do feel flush with both feet on the mat and not on either side, outer or inner edge of the feet. And then adjusting your bottom in between, coming to the forearms, just allowing the lower back to soften into the ground for a moment, chin towards the chest, adjust. So my feet were too far, I'm just gonna bring them in. And then, oh, I don't need my reading glasses. Come down, bringing the back of the head to the mat and the hands softly, the lower belly, palms in, just resting here, closing your eyes. Just taking this pause to really make that deliberate step into the body. So whatever visual works, even climbing down the ladder from the brain using the spine as your steps, just to find a space below the neck that may be calling us for a little more awareness or perhaps just a gentle breath. Let's just let the breath, you can just observe your breath. I wouldn't force it in any way, shape or form. This is just a time to Move in, settle, ground, allow that ground to support us beneath, from beneath. And maybe be drawn to those spots that are resting on the ground, soles of the feet, back of the hips. Perhaps you notice weight through the lungs and the heart, the back of the head. At some point, when you feel ready, start just do a couple of deeper cycles of breath with the, so the observing that the breath, we can just imagine and sense the breath radiating from our core out in these sort of beautiful waves instead of coming top down in a linear fashion. So just Whatever again, whether it's a sun or a starfish, just breathe into this beautiful vessel, in through the nose and out through the mouth, or you can do out through the nose, whatever comes more naturally to you right now. Just some nice round full breaths. If you wanna move your hands up above the head, stretching and feeling the side body wake up a little bit, you might wanna do that. All right, just take one more pause just to notice the body that's resting on the ground and we'll open our eyes, <coughs> excuse me. If you did stretch your arms above, just bend them and we're gonna come over to our right side. Okay, putting, bending the legs at the knees, putting the right hand in the palm of the right, side of the head in the palm of the right hand, bending those legs. So they're stacking the left leg right on top of the right. And this is important. Most of us you'll find in body observation, you'll find your left leg is creeping back. That's a sure sign that you've tilted back and you kind of want to adjust that. You want to stay very present in this. It seems really silly, but it's incredibly effective for strengthening the medius, which is the side, one of the glutes and uh, really effective for hips. So bring the left hand down somewhere to support and get used to what it's like to feel completely stacked. Okay, my hips are a little bit, okay. The ankles are flexed, so they're strong. The toes are strong. And we're just going to open that left knee, keep the inside of the feet touching and then close it and open it. Though we've done it before. It's not going to be a dramatic uh, movement, but you want to be really focused on as much uh, stillness through the pelvic bowl as you can in this just opening, closing. And you know you've got it when it's got, don't do it quickly, okay? This is about 
really getting down to this area where it's calling us and doing it slowly is richly maybe let's think of our practice moving through rich molasses everything we do having that slight isometric sort of resistance really reaping the benefits soaking them up keep going and kind of have that pause at the top you, your cycling of breath can be is going to be maybe out of whack with the lift and lower of the knees. That's absolutely fine. You just want your breath pattern to be as as smooth and easy and uh, deliberate. Good. Do a couple more of those. Right where it starts to really crazy. That is not fun. Right. Good. Okay. Bring it down. And we're just going to go right to the other side. So. Come over onto your back and scoot over onto your left side, creating the same shape. Left leg is on the mat, head is in the left palm, or you know what, you can put your head on a block or something if you're doing this at home. Again, get those legs. So I'd suggest the, I sh should have said it before, the ankles are perpendicular. So the four legs are perpendicular to the upper legs. Get those knees flush with one another and begin to open and close like a little clamshell, isolating it absolutely, completely in the right side going, which is we call right here, right here. And don't go for big movements, maybe focus a little bit of, of creating a little bit more support for the spine at the front of the body. So if you feel all droopy in the front, re-engage, you have time to really sc body scan, be body aware, embodied, body correct, body perceptive. Right. And maybe you can go higher. So I was just working a little bit higher, but it's like if you compensate for that height by rocking the pelvis, it's no, it's it's a waste of time. And we've gotten into the head practice versus the body practice. Keep going. It should ache. It's incredibly effective and really great for walking, so, uh, for functional walking. Good. Yeah. Okay. Close it down. Come back onto, see, onto our back. And just let's find this beautiful symmetrical complementary posture, supine body and soles of the feet together, knees gently float towards the floor. Take the time, so I wouldn't clamp the heels up towards the groin too much. Just wait a second and bring the hands back to where we started inside the hip crests for a moment. The back of the arms are supported by the floor. Keep the eyes soft and gaze unfocused just take a moment to let the hips accept this you may find that after doing that one little thing that the hips have already become uh, warmed up more open and readily uh, uh, willing ready and willing to create space for the groin good okay and then slowly close those legs up and we're going to bring the legs in and allow the lower back to soften into the mat. Bring the hands to the hamstrings. Make that, oh, there goes my back. I love that. Just rock a little bit in your expression of apanasana, right? I wouldn't go to the nth degree here. Just rock a little bit. And then let go of that shape a little bit because you're going to start your spinal rolls. Just small. But remember, it's through the core engaged into the mat, not the neck. And at some point, indeed, at some point, you will make it up. And we'll just come up to sitting nice and tall, perch on a block. This is a moment that just you might want to, if it's not already there, you may want to put your block somewhere at the top of your mat. There's just on the next cycle, you may want to bring it into the sequence or not. So here we are, just get a little bit perched forward, nice and tall through the trunk and the side body, front and back and sides. We'll take the hands now, bring them in front, interlace them, facing inwards at the heart, and then flip that wrist movement. Bring them out as we stretch the arms, keeping quite aware of, of this buoyant dome. So I don't need to feel like you're stretching away. You're really nice and broad. Get those palms open, get into the wrist, spread the bones of the hands and the muscles, and then let go of the bind, bring them out to the side. First palms will face behind us. Feel this anchoring, the strength of the muscles in the upper back. Now turn both arms. And I want you to read me when I say, not from the wrist slat, but really open them where you feel, oof, because they're sleepy shoulders at the moment, bend at the elbows, making that somewhat cactus or goalpost, whatever arm shape you want to uh, fashion or think of when we're making this kind of shape. And now 
slowly take the arms, both of them out of the peripheral vision. Feel, maybe it's, it might be subtle, but you feel a little bit of feedback in the upper chest where the collarbones are resting. Maybe they've got a spread to allow for this shoulder blades coming towards the spine. Make, imagine you're pressing your arms against the wall and direct the opening, the upper chest, and then fill it in. So spread the fingers, engage the arms, bring the shoulder blades back. It should be really hard. <laughs> yeah, and then slowly rise them up and do it slowly enough that you feel this energy starting deep in the hip, maybe deep in the center of the earth, up, and it finishes through those four fingers on each hand and the thumb. Da, 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 da. That's it. And turn the palms to face the ground and bring them down in front as far as you're comfortable finding the mat or the ground. And just start to inch them, inch, and I mean maybe half inch increments until you feel the lower back have to come into play, give a little bit of, of, of a lengthening and softening. And that's when you feel a little, <laughs> start to move the awareness to the front of the body, squeeze it in, and you'll feel a you're doming. Think of cat cow, the cat side of cat cow, and slowly follow that incremental opening with the chin coming in. Feel the softening in the front body, squeezing closed, right? The organs in the front of the body, all of them, including the pancreas, the tummy, the liver. And just have this sense that the kidneys and the lungs themselves have all got little helium balloons and they're popping up. Now go a little bit farther if you can, out of the hips, becoming less curled in and more length, creeping the fingers, starting to lift the chest a little bit more, get neutral in the neck. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And then walk the hands back, plant them on the mat, shoulder width apart, nice spread hands, and just come into table for a moment with the toes curled right under, waking up the arches, lift the sitting bones. So you're going to lift the hips up and feel just when we do that, tilting the pelvis, plug your belly in so you don't feel like you, uh, you want to have nice uh, engagement here, even though we're so, because we're tilting the pelvic bowl around the top of both of the legs and shoving the hips back towards those heels bringing the forearms down to the mat as we push into those heels, wiggle your bottom, gazing at the space between your thumbs. And then note to self, observe that the, sho the shoulders are behind the wrists in this placement. And we're gonna write that we're gonna slowly drift back up until we feel the shoulders stacking, doesn't matter if they are exactly, sense them and step back and find the first full engagement, forearm plank, fire up the thighs which means really engage them, press your intention through both heels. Feel the length in the Achilles, fantastic too for strides. A lot of us uh, sort of my, don't have a lot of flexion in the ankles. Feel the back of the knees stretching. Feel the strength in the belly. Be okay with the balance. There's balance here, right? Balance is, it's, it, it, it's funny because balance is actually a bunch of tiny, tiny movements that give the uh, appearance of stillness, but you're never still, right? Everything's triggering. Lower the knees, open the hips down and release the tension in the feet by flipping them. Press the ground away and create the first sphinx. So first press the ground away, creating that strength down the arms and earthing it. So there's grounding the posture and then begin to soften. So a full-sided posture by lifting and doming the upper chest, press down to the full form on both sides. Press the top of the feet down, thigh, fire up your thigh muscles. Mm -hmm. And then lay ourselves down, palm on palm, forehead on the back of the hand, releasing the back of the neck towards the crown. Keep the pubic bone grounded and lift the legs and separate them. Maybe the width of your mat you can pick, maybe a little wider. And just be aware of where sensation ebbs and where it flows, where it increases. So here we're just about bringing some heat and fire to the lower back. You can see your neck is totally soft. But now we're gonna lift the hands, the arms with the forehead up and away, moving the posture, feel the shoulder blades squeeze towards the spine. And just get comfortable with how this simple lift, anchoring through that navel, this beautiful 
um, the second and the third, the energy centers, how you still feel movement when we breathe. Nothing is held. Just embrace the shape. Stretch the arms out. Stretch the legs a little wider if they haven't gone. Try to be gentle with the chin, so keep it down in the soft eyelids. Feel the buttocks fire up. Stretch your energy out to all the four corners of your space. Notice we can keep the neck soft as we do this. Bring the legs back in line with the hips. The hands come down beneath the shoulders now, tracking the elbows back, still gazing softly downwards, ready for cobra. So again, purchase through the pubic bone in the hips and slowly reach up, exhaling. That's a chance to track the elbows in. Thumb and first finger really finding the root and the pinky side of the hands. Nice broad upper chest. Maybe go a little bit deeper. This is incredibly deep back bend. Actually, people think it's a, a softer one, but if you go straight arms, it's incredibly strong. So I would recommend not to. Let's try this though. Here we are in Cobra. We're gonna transition to downward dog, but through our knees. So let's do it together slowly, incrementally. Plug the belly in and start to push off the mat. Okay, keep the chest strong. Pull the belly in, feel the shifting of the weight, toes coming under waking up those feet, slowly lifting the knees, slowly pedaling the feet, find your way. I've drifted down my mat, so I'm gonna, and just slowly, deliberately, beautifully come into downward dog. Our first one, a deep and lovely inversion, a multitasking, well, it's not really multitasking, multi-nourishing posture. Let's take a moment while we're here upside down, which understand when you're upside down, cueing is rather difficult. So don't be surprised if you get a bit confused sometimes when you're in downward dog or listening to me. Have the idea now, or become aware of the shape of the hands, the softness beside each and every finger, the space between the fingers is just as important as the fingers themselves. Remember, space in between. Same with the toes. To feel them all one kind of a club foot or can we begin to direct our awareness to softening the space finding the space in between good okay let's step up to the hands now slowly at some point you might need to bend your knees a lot to get there you might have to take your hands away do that do whatever feels good you're making your way into a rag doll so belly is not going to be touching the thighs take hold of the opposite elbow using that bind to bring a little more weight and a more stretch for the back body. Maybe it's just a deeper, more rich and nourishing rag doll. And then let go, go a little higher and do a little, a little bounce, maybe over to the side, to side, seeing how the back and the side body reacts to this and how the feet are rooting us, tethering us to the ground, feels good. And then let's come to center and just notice before moving that how the chin is gently, but not slam, but gently in towards the chest and how the back of the neck remains long. Keep the back of the neck long as we press the feet down and start to roll up on one inhale somewhere. Stop, honor the inversion, like the totally collapsed chest, hearts embedded, snuggle behind the lungs and slowly roll up to stand. At some point, you're going to get there. When you get there, stack. Ooh -hoo. And take the stack the ears above the shoulders and take the pinky fingers towards the side seam and the pants a little bit. Okay, just rock forward and back. Really staying connected with that which is rooted to the earth. This is what's grounding us keeping us centered and at present, in present and on present. Okay, bring the arms up, mirroring the length down to the feet. Exhale, sweep them out to the side and come to half stand, really feeling the loosening over the tops of the legs. Bend the knees, we've done this before. Inhale, Utkatasana with the stretched out arms. Exhale, bring them back to the side body, stretching the back of the legs right down, lift the toes. Inhaling all the way back up to Urdhva Hastasana, smoothly, slowly, deliberately over 
The neck is in line with the spine, moves as one unit. Inhale, feel the ground. You can push your feet away in this if you want a lot of power. Exhale, plug the belly in, find the balance. Shoulder blades to spine, inhale, reach it right back up into that column. Woo, and over. So here finding this powerful flow, it's just we're not even moving, but you can just appreciate, appreciate how just moving through the space around us, it can be so soothing. Another one of these all the way over, okay. Utkatasana, powering it up from the ground from like a thunderbolt. Come to half stand, stay here this time. Stay here, breathe it out. Offer the weight a little forward, so trust, fire up your thighs, trust, trust the process. Okay, and then we're gonna take a big squat and round and dome the back. Shift the weight into the right foot. You take the left leg back and long and you'll learn, okay, you may have to adjust. We're going into, into crescent first. So the kneecap comes down, the foot flips. Offer the whole left shin to the ground. Try to create as little space in the front of your left ankle. So really press the top of the foot. And then back away by bringing the left hip over the knee first. But I really want you to feel this sense of connectedness to the shin and the top of the foot, not the kneecap of the left leg. Okay, and we'll just do that turnout we did in Tadasan. So gently, externally rotating the arms, keeping a bit of space, but not too much between the fingers. Just a gentle fanning of the fingers, which keeps us mindful of fanning the upper chest. And as we fan that, we shift our weight forward through into the front hip, plug the belly in to counteract that so you don't feel you've dumped and you're kind of all bony and, and hangy in the posture. Just squeeze the shoulder blades, feel the chest. And if you want, you can feel even something interesting. Maybe if you find that counter pull of pulling the right foot in and the left shin forward, you'll feel the wake up of the hamstrings. Ooh. Ooh. Keep the gaze soft, the neck comfortable. Okay, slowly drift back. As we do, palms can turn in. Right hand comes on the inside, taking both. This is where that block I was mentioning you can always put your hands down on a block or when you get familiar with this or you like this sequence, bring two blocks, right? So find the mat with your hands. And we're just gonna open this right foot completely, but you need to keep the ankle strong. So I don't want you to feel all stretched out on the outside of your right ankle. So try as you might to open it up over to the side. Now the chest sort of, we're just gonna bend at the elbows or keep the arms straight if that's enough. And let's, just before we move any more deeply into this, you wanna make sure that we're still effectively where we're inside the adductors, so the right inner leg. And you wanna imagine that you're, you're seeking the ground, the inside of your right foot. Does that make sense? It's because you're on the outside edge of your right foot. But you do, so you need to counteract that by trying to reach down more strongly and thoroughly through the inside of your right foot. And you'll feel that connection. And then like we do in Chaturanga or anything, you can offer the chest forward and down without lifting the chin and disconnecting in that area. Or maybe the forearms come down. That's pretty deep though. That'll move into the back on the right side. Okay. The toes have stayed looking forward. That's why we've lifted the foot. Stay here, or I'm just giving this option if you want to see what it feels like to lift, go into full flight, lifting that kneecap, just feeling charged and lit up everywhere. Notice the side body, where do we feel? Do we feel even through the chest or does the right side feel sinky? Observe, observe. If you did lift your knee, bring it down with me. <clears throat> Flip that back foot. Come back slowly through whatever, unless you stayed up there. Close up this right foot and turn it out now. Turn it out on an angle, but keep it flush to the ground. All right. All right. And finally, you can stay here, really offering the same thing, the chest forward and down. Take the forearms down to the mat, keeping mindful that the gaze is soft and down. It should not be looking at your back knee because then you're overstretching. Explore sinking a little bit over to the right side. Maybe the just a sense of creating sort of circles with the hips while we're practicing here. What feels good? What feels rich? Wow. 
Good. Okay, so if you came down, remember, always come back the way you came in. So placing the hands in an appropriate spot, staying very present with movement. Close that right foot in. Take the right hand to the outside. Toes under of the left foot and lift it. Wait. Just feel this point. So we've got to propel ourselves up. So slowly right leg stays bent and just start to straighten the left leg towards the ceiling. Maybe straighten the right leg. Just have this idea of imagine standing one-legged splits is the idea. So maybe that helps. And then control the descent to left leg. Let the body come belly to thigh. Seed pod. Lift to half stand, skimming the sides of the pants, finding the length through the arms, out the fingers, reaching down the inside legs and finding the space between the toes. Take a big squat, shift the weight, take the right leg back now, knee down, release the foot. You know where we're going, back away. Let the arms drape down, fashioning really wide tops of the shoulders, which gives ease to the neck, should feel kind of good. And gently offer them out. Drop the left hip because it'll tend to creep up and start to take the drift forward. Once we get that really open listening to the right hip, understanding, communicating with the body, chances are you may want to gently move the focus to your tummy, to the core, because probably it started to fall out and jump off the bus. We need to call it back on the bus. Bring it all. We're all, <laughs> it's like, Whatever image for me, imagery for me, it's like the um, filings, right? Even though we may be beautiful magnets, sometimes the filings get a little lost. You call it back. Reconstitute, reconstitute. Okay, back away. Find the mat. Keep the toes as is and just open the whole foot. Find that strong ankle by spreading the big toe and the big toe mound. Okay, and then. Oops, down. Or stay straight armed, buoyant chest, big back, upper back, comfortable neck. Feel the space between the ears. It sounds crazy, but just imagine the insides of the ears. Make sure. Or you forearms, whatever feels good. Be curious, be creative, and just be safe. If you want to do toes under, you can fire that up. Yeah, that's it. Beautiful. Be patient and okay with not moving super quickly. Because sometimes the super quick moving does soothe the brain, the brain, uh, the head brain, cranial brain, but it's not really what we're going for. Come back up and turn the foot out, replant it, flip the back foot again and fashion your way back down to what feels good. Again, you could turn the toes under going into flight with the back foot. Just make sure that your left knee is not giving you any grief, nor the left ankle. Just allow that gentle shifting of the weight through the hips, which changes the function of the shin and the top of the foot to the mat. Okay, slowly exit the way you came in, turning the toes under, left hand to the outside, toes under the right foot. Just feel that buoyancy. You need to step off, press the left foot down, stretch that right foot up somewhere, and then bring it down, belly to thigh, crown to floor, soft in that space. Press up into half stand, add the arms. Bend at the knees, shift the weight up into Utkatasana, and strong reach out the fingers. Inhale, up to Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, the arms back down. Feel the tops of the shoulders release from the neck. Inhaling, oops, oops, inhaling up. Exhaling over in one unit, hips to ears. Inhale, Utkatasana. Exhale, half stand. Take that breath. Huge step getting into both hips and buttocks. Shift the weight. Take the left leg back and keep it high. Okay. 
Bring the arms along the sides. Again, gently, but deliberately. Turn them so the pinky side of the fingers kind of looks in and notice the, the gentle opening in the front of the shoulders, square off the hips. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Now, turn both of the arms to face the side body. Press through the right heel. We're coming in to bring the arm shoulder height, the front leg stretches straight. Shoulder blades to spine, upper back, upper chest, complementary. Feel the neck perfectly placed. Palms together, feel the release in the upper back, it's so great. And then soft the hands to the heart, bend that right leg into a high lunge. Press those legs down. Remember, see if you want to find more heat and more dynamic, a, a more dynamic sort of way of practicing. Not that it's necessary, you actually want it. Feel what it's like when you pull this right foot in towards your left leg is coming forward. You feel a bit of clamping. And then separate the hands, heel forward and lower the knee somewhere towards the ground. Stop where you need to. Find that nice functionally long line in the left side. Feel full, full, full footed through the right. So if you start to feel pinky side more, bring it down, that elusive balance. Straighten the leg as we seek the ground through the hands. Soften just like we did before, reaching it up somewhere away from the right foot and then let it come right down. Belly to thighs, stretch out the back body, let the crown go down. Inhale to half stand and hit my bell. Exhale, shift weight, find the ground, shift the weight, right leg is going back and keep the knee high. Slowly come into your arrow lunge. So feel, we, it's like we're thirsty. We're drawing it up like our legs are straws. In the center of the earth is the most rich, nourishing liquid life force. Bring it up the legs, then it pools in the belly. And then we add the arms, bring it up, suck it all the way up, and then expand it outwards. Pinky finger, sorry. The inside. Okay, turn both of the arms to face in. Press through that left heel, stacking the left leg and bringing the arms out from the shoulders. Palms face one another. Try to neutralize the hip, which probably means we send a little bit of a right hip, draw it forward, body reading, body loving. Palms together. And just noticing how different that feel. Palms together, the upper back goes, hello. Hands to heart, left knee bends. So bringing the hands together functionally with straight arms will moves the opening from the front to the back. And then when we soften the hands into the heart in what we could call Anjali Mudra, don't you feel? You neutralize that and you make friends. And you're like, oh, the dome of the rib cage feels really great. And then separating the hands, heel forward to the back foot, lower the knee. And find again, your line directly down the right leg through the front of the right hip. Find the mat, soften the knee, be buoyant. If you just wanna tuck, just tuck. My stretch up, bring that right foot to the mat, belly to thigh equally rooted through both feet. Press up into half stand. Utkatas and arms out from the shoulder, half stand, press those heels into the ground, push the legs away if you want more power, and inhale up to Urdhva Hastasan. Exhale back down. Inhaling up, exhale over those standing legs, feel the release, the hips are nice and warm, power through the buttocks, Utkatasan. Half stand, arms come back. A oh, big old press down, right, left leg goes back. Turn it on an angle. Bring the right arm, we'll just inhale. Instead of, uh, we'll just bring the right arm across the right thigh. You establish a nice even root through both feet. Now let's all move up to our right hip and buttock. Probably feel it drifting and peering over to your side wall of your space. Can you call it back and imagine, just visualize your leg bone, that femur, and bring it in. Bring it in. You'll feel some power happen when you bring it in line, okay, with the knee. 
Now, left arm faces out. We're going to do a full sweeping right draw that circle until it stacks above the shoulder, at which point press through that right heel. Come all the way up, open both arms, space your fingers, thumbs look up, shoulder blades engaged. <laughs> Turn both. See how much movement these shoulders are. It's a girdle. So you go a lot. We want to really get all this lovely range of movement. Turn both arms and release a little bit of that spreading of the fingers. Take the gaze over the right hand and bring that right knee. Extremely classic warrior two. Again, note this tendency for the right side of the body on this side to sink over, flatten collapse you want to you know stay with team body so the legs are doing the work let's bring the work up everything works together like an Amish barn raising okay nobody's sitting on the outside watching and picking their nose okay now cartwheel this left arm again all the way up over out of the hip find the mat with both hands pivot the back foot and again pulse it up Stretch it up. Maybe it's become a little more, a little easier. Maybe not. <laughs> Plant this left foot. Allow the belly to soften. It's really important right here. Feels yum. Come to half stand. Engage the arms. Get ready. Plug the belly. Big old deep. Step back with your right foot. Turn it on your angle. Left hand crosses the left thigh. Again. Really kind of glue the outside of your right foot to the mat, so the pinky side, okay? And now let's visit the left hip. Does it feel like it's sending over to the left? You wanna bring it back in line with that knee, with that left ankle, with that left grounding foot. Right arm facing out, spread the fingers and just reach forward all the way up. At that point, press through that left heel and power it up, 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 up and away. So spine is long from crown. Turn both arms downwards, right in the socket. Take the left knee, bend it over the ankle, gaze over the left hand and begin to refine. Where is it? Something feel overworking? Can we soften that area? Bring strength to somewhere that is trying to evade our attention. Okay, all the way, sweep that right arm down, all the way up, back, pivot. Softly, softly, bring that leg up or somewhere and just step into your tuck, belly to thigh. Press into your half stand, arms by the side of the body. Bring the arms out as we dip the hips, pressing through the heels as low as you wanna go. <laughs> Erdva Hastasan out of the ankles to the fingertips and sweep the arms back down and around and then just tweak them again so they're slightly more open than they normally are. Ooh. Let's bring the left hand to the chest and the right hand covers the left, chin softens down. And close the eyes for a moment, feel the beating of the heart. Take a moment. Be quiet with the feet. You'll probably feel the weight distribution moving as you look completely still. But again, that's the beauty. Balance. Let go, lift the crown. Water. Okay. With the feet as they were, we're going to just take the arms up. Left hand takes hold of the right wrist. Left palm is facing up. Use that as external leverage to just remind us and make it a little bit, mm hmm, it's going to be stronger because we can use the strength of our body to encourage a little longer opening. So stretch that right side of the body up. Right? It's always easier if you have something to leverage against versus just doing it in midair. Then Feel the strength again, that straw like nourishing from the earth and comes up and pools in the pelvic bowl. And then with that strength, allow this side body 
So come over into a size standing side bend with a bind. Once you come here, reach down to the ground to the inner legs first. So you'll feel much, probably I'm hoping you'll feel much more stable. And then gently, mindfully create this opening of the right chest towards your ceiling, towards the sky, counteracting the earth of the caffiness of that. And then release. Come up, undo the hand. If you need to take a break, if you're, we can bring the arms down. Otherwise, switch it, root it, stretch it. Elbow of the right arm is probably gonna stay bent. Again, find your foundation, feel strong, strong through there. So the stronger we are from the base, the more stable we'll be and we'll facilitate a rich side bend. Once you reach on the inner leg, start to find this chest opening a little bit, refining the posture, refining the experience. Remember to breathe into the space you're opening because that really feels, that's what we're looking for. And then come up, release. Okay. We're gonna do standing twist into the hip. So figure four. So right leg, standing leg, left leg lifts, ankle is strong so the toes look forward, not dangling off your leg. Right. Before going any further, why don't we take our left hand, pinky finger towards the groin, the right hand, palm in. Okay, and just feel there, gently make it nuanced, but you know, the right hand pushing down, pulling up. This time take, have the left hand and have this idea of sort of pressing the left hand gently, kind of in encouraging a slightly uplifted motion there. <clears throat> you can do that. <clears throat> okay. There's your psoas will come into play. Let go of that. Right hand slides to the left thigh. Left hand comes around where the right hand had been. Start the revolutions of the spine, just down, just gently. Having a sense of breathing our way, exhaling into a standing twist, very mindfully, comfortably. So we feel both sides of the spine are, are twisting together as a family, not one pushing the other one around. Stop where it feels good to stop, reroute that right foot, make it full. Don't forget about this left leg, there's a lot of work. So it will not be your deepest twist, that's good. Come back, let go of the spots, bring the hands to the hips. Bend that right leg, cross the left over, send those hips back to where the wall meets the floor behind you, the left leg is in. Stayed strong. Oh, and sit into the hips, the buttocks. Think of the center of your buttocks. There's a little muscle on both sides called the piriformis. Imagine opening that space. Cradling the hips with the hands. Again, being aware of the chin, stepping off the bus, keep it in line. Stamp that right foot down, plug the belly in, come back up, lift the left leg and put it down. And no, try not to move and flutter about, okay? Just ex be okay with the experience, just let it happen. See, do you feel one? It feels so much more rooted and grounded than the left. And so in my practice, I probably, I don't have time to wait too long and I'm sorry about that. But generally just see, this is the rahasya how cool the right side of the body feels and the hip is going whoa, whoa, whoa. And the left one's like, ah. So generally you'd kind of want to wait just to really soak in that, set those sensations. But we're going to shift our weight to the left leg. So it will, I hope, receive the same lovely sing song. Bring the right leg up, anchor the ankle, left hand to the pubic bone, right hand, oh, sorry, right hand to the pubic bone, left hand to the sacrum. And just giving us just a little more presence down here. When we touch ourselves somewhere, it can, it's a little easier to access. Plug the belly in so you need to engage down here to keep strong and then take the hands away, 
shift them, left hand to the thigh, right hand back to the sacrum. Begin the twisting. Have fun with the twist. You have lots of times to do crazy deep twists, but we're balancing, we're breathing, we're trying to stay connected with the space of the vertebrae, the discs, what's going on with the organs around, feeling this rich rejuvenation. Come back, bend the left leg, cross the right one over, hands to hips, seat to the block wall. I lost it because I was looking at you. I said, don't look, you don't need to look at me. And remember, don't lose your digestive tract, the energetic one. Keep the chin in place. Keep the line of energy intact from pubic bone to under chin. Press back up, lift the leg, put it down. Hmm. Okay, let's just slowly step the feet together. Inner feet. So we're going to just do Utkatasan in a classic, much stronger form. So legs are together, toe knuckles together. Reach down the inner leg, fan the big, the toes. Okay, so you don't feel like this because it's already going to be like this kind of a posture anyway. Bring the arms up, interlace the fingers, take the index finger, reach it up before moving. Okay, actively seek those. I don't want you to feel like all billowy through the side ribs where you're squinching your neck with your shoulder caps. You want to feel like you're allowing the actual true weight of the arms to sink into the body. We're supporting it with the trunk, the strong side body, front and back. Very strong mudra. Focus on the upper back and the chest first. Keep them nice and strong and open and then send those hips back like we did before. Lift the chest, fire it up. Take the feet away. Send the arms longer every time we breathe. Fill it out. Mm -hmm. Shake it up. <laughs> Shake it up. And then from this, let go of the mudra and simply swan dive some the hips over. Let go of the crown to the floor. Let the lower back find the space as we inhale. Yeah. And then let's find the mat with our bottom. Arms around the shins, tuck the chin in, allow the softening of the front body, stretching out the upper back. Mm -hmm. Send the left leg out, bring the right foot in, flex the ankle of the left leg, and just put the left hand behind the leg somewhere that you can reach comfortably, that you're not throwing yourself off kilter. Right arm sweeps up to shoulder height. Palm faces the front. And then try to feel sitting bones and the legs strong and then sweep it forward like you're just going to touch your screen or the front of your room. Stretch it. So shin, ankle, foot. So say you, some people would practice keep a block here and would go for the block. You can do that. I don't like that. It's too much. And simply soften the right side of the body towards the ground a little bit. Really be present in what's the feedback on the right side of the body, the lower back. Let go, find the mat with the right hand in line. We're doing that crazy thing. So point the toe, getting a nice counter pose. Stretch the hips up, open them, and stretch it up. And out, fingertip to toes. And then slowly drawing it all the way back in. <laughs> left hand takes hold, bring that left leg in and just create the shape on the other side. Find the fullness through the seat. Right hand supports, left arm up. And 
Bring it forward. So lean out of your seat. Come on, get over there. Take hold. Ha. Then plug the front body in, encouraging that opening to come into the back. And it is a forward fold as well, so it is cooling. And let go of the foot, stretch it back up and out, plant it behind, point leg and the toes of the right foot and sweep all the way up. And back down. Bring that right leg in, undo the left. Bring the hands behind, we're going into reverse table, getting the feet comfortably apart. Knees up, hips up. Shoulders over the wrists, suspending ourselves. Some people actually like looking down the pose. You could try that. Just, I'd suggest not letting the head hang and dangle from your shoulders. And then when we come down, let's bring the, our bottom closer to our heels so we have more space behind us. Take your block now. You should be able to reach it. Shouldn't be too, too far. Bring it in beside. We're gonna come down on our forearms. First, bringing the legs together. Noting if you feel the lower back pressing on your thumb, so the thumbs are inside, fingers are on the outside. So you're kind of cradling or shaping the sacrum. Then uh, I just want you to define your line a little bit more like your little arrows are coming from your throat down to the pubic bone so that you get your natural curves because you're gonna bring the legs up. No collapsing in the lower back. Straightening the legs, spreading the toes, playing around, maybe bending. So find your own creative stuff. Maybe you want to do some little bit like a scissor kick, rolling those legs inwards if they were going to roll. Keeping everything stable through the trunk, the chest lifted. Find what feels good, whatever it is. Breathe through it. And then plant the feet. Separate them when they come down to the mat. And then let the belly soften now. The lower back does find the mat again. And the back rolls down into the back of the head. Find the feet again, like we did in the opening. <clears throat> Take a moment here. And then press the feet into the mat. Lift the hips from the mat and take your block. Now, of course, if you don't want to, you can put it on the low edge. But I'm going for a slight back bend. So put it on the long edge if you can. Slide it beneath. Once you get it there, I'd suggest pressing the back of the head, lifting the whole, you know, upper back off and replacing. So you have no pulls or tugs that are unfortunate in here. Visit the lower back. It should not be hurting. Take the arms now, bring them in alongside the block. Maybe you can even turn them in like Find them. Actually, no, just keep them facing the block. So. Supported back then, not one of the deepest. A lovely opportunity. To get that nourishing inversion. You like to close your eyes now you are absolutely welcome to do that if you don't need to find sweaters and socks and business like that not doing anything technical but do press the feet back into the mat slide your block out but stay up for the moment so let's see if we can just imprint vertebrae by vertebrae as we go down lowering all right all the way, vertebrae, disc, vertebrae, disc, vertebrae, disc, tailbone, release. And I know every part of you wants to go into Apanasana, but it's really helpful and healthy to not corner pose like that so quickly, okay? Especially for us who are older. <laughs> okay, 
then slowly I maybe bring the legs in, let the lower back soften into the mat. Don't bind yet here, just see if that's okay. Calves to hamstring. And then let's take the arms out a little bit away so we don't roll on them and just come over to your left hip in a gentle supine twist as we take the right arm up and out of the hip somewhere or draw circles with the elbow or find your own sweet spot that feels good. Breathe into it, stretch into it, yawn into it. Mm. And, and then release, come back over and let's take it over to the other side. Again, gently coming to the right hip, left arm now kind of stretches out, do our thighing, feels good. Mm -hmm. So we come up to center, start to ready ourselves for our final posture of integration and rest. So whether it's constructive, like you, with the way we opened with the feet apart, which is fabulous for the psoas, both sides, <laughs> the legs can sink in whatever shape you want to do, or more traditionally, Shavasana with some support behind the knees is always lovely. Never, if you've had your eyes closed, let's keep them softly closed. If you haven't, let's do that now. In one way, starting to withdraw from the outer edges, puddling into the fluid bodily. Really inviting any residual holding or tension or work to just melt away. Inviting all the fascia that's wrapped around our muscles and bones and ligaments to ease with our breath. Just experience the radiating energy form, energy packet that we all are. Inviting this softness and space and yielding to remain, we can gently ride those inhalations back out to the physical edges of our body, perhaps the radiating energy bodies as well, noticing the space around us, the sounds, the air. Notice, observe. Just move the fingers on the toes and maybe come to your side when you feel ready to move. And up to sitting, keeping the eyes gently closed still and just bringing ourselves up. Right. 
I just like to invite to so take a moment. I think in this day and age, and to do it more regularly is to just take a moment. Whatever it's unedited, but this sense whether you want to list something you're grateful for or just sense perhaps just bringing a smile to the lips or lifting the corners of the mouth or just bring the hands together up and just softening the forehead towards those hands resting the weight of the head in this mudra and just taking a moment Thank you. Thank you for sharing your practice with 